The Craig Folly Show on Deadline Detroit is made possible in part by TechTown Detroit, Detroit's entrepreneurship hub. TechTown Detroit is a business incubator and accelerator, helping tech startups and local businesses launch and grow. TechTown supports businesses with co-working, office, meeting, and event space. They also connect entrepreneurs to resources and learning and networking events in Detroit. TechTown Detroit, Detroit's entrepreneurship hub. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the week that was on Deadline Detroit. I'm Craig Folly. Uh, we've got a lot to talk about. My regular guest, Nancy Derringer, is here with us from Deadline Detroit. We appreciate that. Alan Langle, not in today. He will be back next week for this. But we brought in a couple of experienced <laughs> experienced panelists from the week that was here. Joel Sklar is back with us once again. Pleasure to have you here. And also Todd Perkins is back with us. A couple of attorneys. And thank you for being here. I appreciate it. You guys sort of last minute just decided to do this, stepping in for Alan, which I appreciate. But I figured the legal minds were going to be important to have here today just because we are at a very historic moment in our Mm. country. Watched them march over those articles of impeachment the other day. And... um, this is on. Mm-hmm. And whether the president wants to dismiss it as a hoax or not, it's about to get very, very real. And there's going to be real pressure on the Senate to actually do this in some sort of meaningful manner. Yeah. Uh, they're they're not. They're not? So <laughs> no, you're, no, you're well, calling I, it right out. I'm just going to say there, you know, there might be a few people who will wobble a little bit, but it's this is a foregone conclusion. Well, I'm, I, I'm afraid. I, think, I think the decision is probably a foregone conclusion, but yeah. you've got to think. If you're in the U.S. Senate and you just put up your hand, and I know I realize that oath is absolutely meaningless. There's no penalty that comes from not upholding your oath to actually look at these things factually. But for somebody like Lamar Alexander, who's getting ready to retire from the Senate, does he want his last official act to be, oh, yeah, by the way, yeah. he carried water for the most corrupt president in the history of the United States? That's, yeah. a, that's a fair question. I think there are other senators who are probably like him, who are willing to have real testimony, real witnesses, com- maybe compel documents, or at least use the documents that wonderful Lev Parnas gave. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there's a, I think there may, I'm not sure it's going to be a trial as I understand it, mm-hmm. but I th- I'm hoping to God that there is some sort of witness. Uh, Bolton, well, perhaps. Mulvaney would be nice. But at the, it's no way it's going to be limited to that, though. I mean, would not then the president's team also be allowed to subpoena whoever they wanted if you're going to allow witnesses? Uh, I, I mean, this could turn into an absolute it, it, circus. It, it depends what Chief Justice Roberts does. You know, if, if it's treated like a real judge, I mean, not a real, he's a real judge. If it's treated like a real trial, then evidence that is irrelevant, that yeah, really has nothing judge. to do yeah. with really the issues that are at hand, then a judge is going to exclude those and say, those aren't relevant. We're not, gonna, we're not having a trial on that. We're having a trial on this. And it depends how much control that the chief judge exerts. Well, you know, I, I've just been busting at the seams to say something because I, I'm rolling with you. It yeah. is, you know, I, the only reason. So to the extent you, you said, and I don't think we're saying anything different here. You're saying you want some meaningful testimony. I think we will get meaningful testimony. But we'll juxtaposition that with the people who've already spoken and said what they were going to do. All that will do is give them the opportunity to explain why that meaningful testimony, why that damning testimony where these guys from Ukraine saw him fire the uh, – the, the, um, the, the, mm-hmm. Yes. Um, so saw these things happen. Why does these lay people who, you know, who are arguably criminals – you know, but as a defense attorney, I'm not going to call him, uh, you know, I'm not going to call him a criminal. He's got a right to trial, you know, but at the same time, you know, it is a farce upon farces. And, you know, but it, all it's going to do is give them an opportunity to explain why that testimony is something that they're not going to um, fall with and then make a determination that, hey, he's not guilty and it will move on. But we also must remember Clinton was convicted. It's not about there's two phases to this. You know, if I was if Clinton I was Clinton was impeached. He was, impeached. He right. he was not convicted. Right, right. Yeah. he was impeached. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. He was acquitted. He was impeached and and then, you know, that that phase from that perspective, he, you know, they but they did do it the right way there. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They didn't come out and announce it ahead of time. Ahead of time. Yeah. You know, so no matter, you know, if I was Mitch McConnell and I wanted to be an honest broker, which I don't think he's going to be, he's I, would, I, I would be, I am <laughs> so sorry, because I want people to hear this. <laughs> he should stay, I would, I would refrain from any involvement because I've said my position and anything I do from now on is going to be tainted. But they don't care. They don't care. No, I don't think Amar Alexander cares. No. No, I don't think he cares. You would think that a conscientious people like these people that I deal with, like you, Joe, I deal with a lot. You know, he's, I mean, this guy ethically has... I, I mean, yeah. you know, is up there. You know, 
they don't that doesn't exist in this political world in this climate that yeah, we're well, you know not not among not enough of them i mean no. maybe mitt romney will flip well susan I, collins will clutch her pearls I, and do, oh yeah i you agree know, I, and I, do I'm, what she'll do and she'll yeah. vote the way that she yeah. tells yeah. her to vote but yes. you know I, i'm looking though at the legal team that trump is putting together i don't know if you've seen this this morning we've got Star? ken star alan dershowitz the person apparently is he's he gonna going, pay him I, I, <laughs> is he going to pay him? You know what I'm well, saying? Uh, he'll get a check later. I promise. I paid legal bills coming yeah. down the road against the Trump no. organization. But uh, <laughs> the person who's apparently going to be giving the oral arguments for the Trump team because he thinks she's good on TV is Pam Bondi, the former attorney general from Florida. <laughs> Pam Bondi. Now, remember Pam Bondi was the one that was investigating Trump University and dropped that investigation After as soon as she little, got a $25,000 yeah. check from Donald J. Trump. Yeah. Uh, Drain for her campaign. Drain the swamp. <laughs> Drain the swamp. Exactly. Fill the swamp. So, higher, I mean, higher. The New only thing I can think of is Judge Janine Pirro probably didn't want to give up her TV gig to, to be on the team, and Roy Cohn's dead. So who else is there? <laughs> That's a good point. It, that, you know, the, you know I, I give it to Trump, though. You know, when it comes to production, he, you know, he, I, I like to say he's an idiot savant, mostly idiot, but he knows how to produce. You know, he knows what presents to his base. I mean, that's one to thing. To his base. I to mean, his come, base. I mean, he's the same guy that said, I can shoot someone in the middle of Fifth Avenue and wouldn't lose a vote. And he's proven that to be he, true. Yes, right. he has. And he has. And he could shoot more than one, you know? And Is so it's really quite disturbing. I, that, that's the, but that's all he's playing to, and God yeah. only knows. But he has been, you know, in, in that aspect, he knows how to present. He, he, again, his use of Twitter just blows me away. Nobody knows how to combat that, how to respond to that. It's immediate. It hits 63 million people, I believe. Mm -hmm. well, well, here's the Terrifying. problem. You know, and this is the elephant in the room. Um, he, you know, we're likely looking at our next second term president. Oh, please. <laughs> you know, stop. Just, you know, let's be, you know, it's almost like a pimple. Let's get it to the head and just pop it. You know, and then <laughs> deal with it and just see what we're going to do from there. But, you know, but the thing is, you know, these missteps and miscues by the Democratic Party. Yeah, are going to allow that. You know, uh, I, I just but you may be I, right. but mm -hmm. I think before yeah. we go on, if we leave this topic, one thing we need to acknowledge: Nancy Pelosi is a boss. Of yes, mm -hmm. that was you know to hold those articles over so long. Uh, that was a very merry Christmas for Donald Trump and his <laughs> ego. You know, the, if nothing else, that was the salvo that she could bring to the party and say, look. At least, well, at least had let him it, hang it, out to dry. Right. She said, "She said uh, he'll always be impeached. He'll right. never be able to." And and that is like, I think it's so funny that she's an Italian because that is a stiletto, which well, is like, <laughs> which is an Italian and, and word. What I love is that right one, she's a woman. Yeah. But two, she's an older woman. She's what? She's seventy nine now. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and she's doing this to this. Well, he's older too. Yeah. But that montage of a man. I know. Being brought to his knees because yeah. you know personally, I'm sure he's getting the business personally in his own mind that he mm -hmm. that megalomaniac that he lives in yeah. the megalomania world that he lives in, it's killing him. You know, yeah. even though he'll you know he, the likelihood but, is he'll be found well, not but, guilty. Uh, and the, the interesting thing though, by by delaying this, and everybody said she was, didn't get anything from did. from Mitch McConnell. She didn't get anything from Mitch McConnell, but what she did do was buy some time for this Lev Parnas stuff Correct. to come to light. Correct. Right. Um, there, patience pays off, you know, with, with Trump because something is always coming up every single day. Right. You know, I, I watched that Rachel Maddow interview with the lab. I was blown highest away. Highest rating she's ever had for her show, which tells me that people are starting to pay attention to this and, now that it's getting <laughs> real. Absolutely. And I think that the, and, and there, there is a reason to be patient with Donald Trump because he you give him enough rope, he will hang himself. And that's what this president is all about. The question is, is there an executioner in a sense, you know, to say, hey, we're the Senate at this point. To, uh, <coughs> to, uh, to, to impeach or at least to question, perhaps even to censor, you know, who knows, censure, forgive me, who knows what evidence will come out of these trials. And I think there, it, it may be that something has to be done, Maybe not removal, that's never going to happen. I have no fantasies about that. But a censure may happen. It depends what really is disclosed and how the mm -hmm. Democrats, I think, really I impose their will to the extent they can. Now, yeah. I, I wanted to ask you this time because you're a defense attorney, mm -hmm. um, and, and you look at Parnas and what he's doing right now. Obviously, he's singing like a canary in mm -hmm. an effort to mm -hmm. potentially you know, minimize whatever punishment he's got coming to him under right. his indictment, uh, trying to give up this information. But he seems to be corroborating a lot of other testimony here. Uh, he is, of course, going to be torn down as somebody who's under indictment, so he's willing to say anything. How do you counter that as a defense attorney? Say, what this guy's saying is legit um, and should be listened to. Countered as a defense attorney or countered as a prosecutor, or uh, just well, as a lawyer. Uh, well, as a lawyer, I'll He's, say uh, this much. And you know, I know you have Fishman on here who does a lot of federal trials, and I've done some too, and and have a lot of federal litigation. 
and you see, and I mentioned federal court because that's where you typically see the resources used to have witnesses like this um, come in. Bad guys court. testifying bad against guys. bad guys to get they the bad guys. They still work. Yeah. They still work. What I do as a defense attorney, what I spend most of my opportunity in voir during a jury, when we get an opportunity, that limited opportunity that we get, if judges allow it, um, and I would imagine in any particular trial they would allow it if a trial came to be, or or at if there's testimony from him at this impeachment process, or um, then juries, lay juries, and I'm not talking about senators, but lay juries, they 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 understand. See, what I do is, as if I was a prosecutor, and what has been done to me, to the extent that uh, they use witnesses, they steal the thunder. They tell you everything he's done. He admits and falls on his sword on everything. And then people. Then he starts to tell the whole story. And so if there's nothing left out of the whole story, why people do tend to believe what they call snitches or what they call cooperating witnesses, like he's kind of setting himself up to be. So at the end of the day, you know, it is still... But you're also dealing with a different jury pool, which but, is the Senate. But wouldn't yeah. you look to other corroborating evidence to support what— Absolutely. Right. And, and so there is other corroborating evidence to support yeah. what Lev Parnas is now before you even get you know, to providing. The, yeah. But before you even get to that, I'm talking about witnesses, even in situations where there's corrob- not corroborating evidence, typically lay juries have a propensity to believe that if the prosecution brings something to their feet, feet as jurors— they're thinking, well, okay, he might not have done this, but he did something. So they're already winning. So mm-hmm. what I do is I spend my time talking to juries to say, look, listen to the instructions of the court. We enter into this in the United States. We enter into these cases as being um, innocent until proven beyond a reasonable doubt of being guilty. That's what, you know, and those are just words sometimes because people still feel in, you know, in the back channels of their heart. Back channels. Uh, uh, front channels, uh, yeah, front channels. channels. <laughs> but you know, in the recesses of their mind, and even if they won't admit it under oath, they still have some intimation or inkling that this person did something. So if that's the case, it's unfair for the defense already. So I think that these witnesses work. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's why you see a lot of pleas in federal court. Sure. You know, ninety-eight yeah. percent. You know, of these things. So, but but the problem with this in their situation is you got to send it. They're yeah. going to buy into, oh, you did this, you did that. You're just trying to buy yourself some time or buy a time by cut favor. by favor yeah. and winning favor for cooperating in this particular matter. So, I, I, you know, it's, it's going to be different than just a lay jury because but, but, you have these individuals who are already predisposed to party the real lines. jury, though, yeah. the public? I mean, you, you know what the there's Senate's no going to do. There's no pressure coming on no, the senators, you know. But, look. but there's no pressure to them. Because well, the people haven't stopped voting for the Republicans. Right. Seventy percent. There's a poll data that came out the other day that said seventy percent of Americans are in favor of having witnesses at this trial. Yeah. Understood. Yeah. But they don't. But polls. Here's another thing. I found out from these judicial campaigns and, and things like that that I've had a lot of experience in, because as a lawyer, you in, in state cases you see people running for judges, and you see judges up by these polls. But polls don't vote, and you know people, you know, casting their vote. You know, because mm-hmm. here's the thing. I, I remember a number, I don't know whether it was, um, you know, because I watch all the news channels, Fox, everything. I can't remember who said it, but the Republican Party really only has a base of about 25 or 26 percent. You know, and if you hold on to that solidly, you can still win. You know, and, and that's the problem because, well, you know, even though 70 percent will, if called, and say, yeah, I want witnesses, that doesn't mean they're going to find so, so here, turn out, I want, turn out, turn I want out. to read this because this is what the president had to say this morning. Uh, and this sort of segues into the Democrats. You mentioned the Democrats mm-hmm. and the circular firing squad that's happening over there. Yeah. So Donald Trump tweets out this this morning. He said, quote, they are rigging the election again against Bernie Sanders just like last time, only even more obviously. They are bringing him out of so important Iowa in order that as a senator he sit through the impeachment hoax trial. Crazy Nancy thereby gives the strong edge to sleepy Joe Biden, and Bernie is shout out again. Very unfair, but that's the way the Democrats Did play he, the game. Isn't Joe Biden a senator too? Yeah, he's going to be there as well. I'm, maybe I'm losing something here. I don't know. <laughs> no, uh, Joe Biden's not. A he is not. He no. is not. He no. gets to sit. Elizabeth there as Warren much as he is wants. though. Yeah, yeah. And and that was interesting because now you see the, the the right and the Fox News folks really trying to exploit 
this well, alleged and rift between Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders. They're taking that talking point right out of crazy, the, cra- the craziest wing of the Bernie Bros. So, well, and, and well, the craziest wing of the Bernie Bros are definitely uh, making a name for themselves right they now really in are. not a good way. Okay. Uh, but, but I mean, think about this. I talk about a circular firing squad. You always knew that Elizabeth Warren and Bernie were going to split that segment of, of the Democratic vote anyway, more than likely, uh, for the, the more progressive wing of the party. Uh, now you've got the Bernie people saying some of their people saying we're going to sit out if, if Bernie doesn't win, which is exactly what happened last time. Not good for the Democrats. You know, is there anything they can do that's going to appease I don't you know, know. The, the progressive wing of the party if their chosen candidate is not the one that's picked? I mean, it's a wide field. It's a wide. It's a it's a big party. It, it, it depends. You don't always get the win. No, you no. don't. It, it depends, I guess, who the candidate is and whether the candidate can, can connect with the progressive wing of the party. You know, I mean, it, it depends. Again, how I do you without no. promising you know, universal health care? But before I, you even get to that, you know, something they need to take a page out of the Republicans book. What's you that? know, the Republicans are what's stuck the, with page. With, you know, I do believe that there are a lot of Republicans who do not agree with what tr- President Trump is of doing. There are. But, but, but they, they're cowards. But, but, but they no, no, there's party lines. They believe in a in a thing. The eleventh commandment, yeah, that's, yeah that's, all that stuff, that, right. No, they believe in that and it's working for them. Well you know, and I don't agree with the spirit of what we should be doing as as Americans, as people who believe in democracy. I don't necessarily believe in this. Yeah. But this is a different kind of war that we're fi- fighting now. I, I hear what you're saying. And I think you're right that they, you know, there's something to that. But I also believe there is a reckoning coming. And oh, yes. all these people, all <laughs> these people <laughs> who kept their mouths <laughs> shut, who said, well, I never liked that guy. I mean, they are going to pay someday. And it's going, it's yeah, not going to be the fun. Pearls, her they day are, is going to come. There are, the, the, we entered the good Germans phase of this presidency oh, wow. years ago. And that's these, th- that's who we're talking about, the good Germans. You, you want to talk about Bernie voters. All right. Okay. I, you got I found something? this, well, I found this tweet from an LA Times political writer and it's it's brief it's a tweet so it's okay. hard to overstate how unpredictable talking to voters can be Melissa from Algona Iowa caucused for Bernie in 2016 then voted for Trump she supports Medicare for all but supports Buttigieg but will likely vote for Trump again if Buttigieg doesn't win the Democratic that makes no nomination. Sense. It, it, it well, makes zero how do you reconcile sense. that at all? This is a woman who just wants somebody to stick a, a microphone in her face and say hi I'm Melissa from you know Algona Iowa it, it's to me that's insane well, and you know, Anybody's thinking about crazy. voting for Trump, though. Yeah. Uh, I woke up this morning, and the first thing I read in the Washington Post was an excerpt from a new <gasps> book called "The Very Stable Genius." It's written by two Post staffers who won a Pulitzer for their coverage of the uh, of the Mueller investigation. Uh, this was a very, very disturbing read this morning. Yeah. He was getting a briefing in the war room basically from the joint chiefs of staff and they were explaining to him the geopolitical importance of all these bases and our strategic alliances what does that matter and he started yeah. getting pissed off he started getting <laughs> flustered and then he just started screaming at him he called them a bunch of dopes and babies and Who doesn't talking, know how to win doesn't know they don't you're yeah. all losers you don't know how to win wars we don't win wars anymore i want to win in afghanistan and they're like well what does that mean no i mean a, a, 2, win 000, in a country that's been at war with two thousand years right and you think that yours you know the grand he, the grand nature get to of the him. let him get to the I'm, really I'm bad part <laughs> i want to hear the, <laughs> which, the which is the, the really dopes bad and babies part. is nothing i mean the whole thing is awful but well you it's know, the it's the wanting to saying why can't we essentially sure yeah charge these, these countries, countries that we are yeah, helping we should protect, be making like money off South of our Korea. soldiers, uh, you know, uh, Which sending is our illegal. boys to die. Yeah, to get paid. That's that is that is a frightening concept. It's not. I, you know, yeah, they all make America there. great again. It's actually and for terrifying. a guy who wouldn't even yeah. be drafted. You know, yeah, or refuse you know, to to serve. Turn but turn the U.S. military you know, into a, a, a collection a of mercenaries. Business. Well, yeah, that's, that's what he not said. What this and is. That's what he suggested. How come we're not making any money off this? We should be making money off of this. Which right. tells me that that's the way he looks at every that, single that's thing that he does in the White House. But, but that's true. How do I make money off? It does. But that's why that's why facts don't matter. That's why truth doesn't matter. If it's purely transactional, if it's just you know. What is my profit loss? Right. Then nothing else matters. And that's frightening because there's no conscience, there's no morality, there's no decency with money. Money is just paper, and that's what he's worshiping, and that's how he's making his determination as to what we should or should not do well, as a nation. And to that the is people messed up. Who are watching this, who are, are reading this story and saying, fake news, they made this all up. I mean, first of all, that's not the way reporters work at this level, at yeah, any yeah. level, but particularly at this level. There's this was mul- in fact, 
Steve Bannon is quoted directly in this mm -hmm. in this piece because he was in the room. I assume there was corroboration from several other people who were in the room. But the other thing that you that you have to keep in mind is, you know, he he said openly in front of live mics not too long after this that if we sent that that we should be sending troops to Saudi Arabia. Right. And he said, and his reason for it was because they, they pay. pay. I, I thought he said they're going to pay a billion dollars or yeah. some amount that yeah. he attributed to, to. Because they pay. Is that, but, I mean. But here's, here's the thing. Is that, that why you join the service here's so you what can go to protect Saudi Arabia? About <laughs> troops in the Persian Gulf. And obviously they're there to, to make sure that the, you know, the shipping lanes are all working and all right. that kind of stuff. The flow of oil around the globe is undisturbed. Sure. But he said, how come we're not getting oil as payment for the troops in the Persian Gulf? Quote, we spent $7 trillion, They're ripping us off. Where's the fucking oil? This is the president of the United States. Yeah. 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 The president the of the oil? United Where's States. Where's our bounty? Yeah. And, Where is and, our bounty? But you've got a situation where the Joint Chiefs are sitting in the room getting scolded by this guy. He's calling them all. You're all losers. Cadet bone spurs. Uh, yep. And, you know, and, and here's the quote from Bannon. This is the part I liked a lot, too. And so Bannon starts to back him up because this is all Bannon sort of yeah. thinking on this. And he goes... You know, the American people are saying we can't spend a trillion dollars a year on Afghanistan. We just can't. It's going to bankrupt us. And not just that. The deplorables don't want their kids in the South China Sea at the 38th parallel or in Syria in Afghanistan in perpetuity. So he said he, that? Yes. The deplorables? Bannon <laughs> called them the deplorables. Okay. The base. The base. He used the term the deplorables. The deplorables. So I'm wondering if that's some sort of code, like, you know, but <sighs> I don't it, know. It just, I wouldn't trust him. <laughs> and anybody that tried to challenge him in this is no longer... Right there, well, then, or no, they've been that, demoted, that's... or they have left. Right. Well, and who stood up for the, for him? Uh, Tell the rest of the Tillerson. story. It Tillerson. was Tillerson. Tillerson stood up and he said, "You know, I didn't serve, but my father and uncle served." And he said, "And nobody joins the U.S. military to make a buck; they do it to serve their country." Right? They do it to love the nation. And they said Trump like turned scarlet. But he held his fire. Of course, he got well, back later by firing Tillerson while he was on the toilet with stomach flu. And Mattis, <laughs> and Mattis, of course, was out not that much later. But he basically was just like, you know what? I, I couldn't stand by while a guy who dodged the draft was was right. berating, Spewing this. Yeah. berating these soldiers. Yeah. Uh, and, and you think about it, and what it shows is just the complete lack of understanding of geopolitics, the complete lack of understanding of what you know, diplomacy is, strategy. Morality. Morality. Yeah. It's, there's none of it on display with this guy at all. And I mean, like I said, I've always disliked this president. I want to make that clear. <laughs> I've disliked him since the 80s when I first saw the art of the deal and the gold-plated <laughs> toilets on the plane and the gaudy airline But was so understated. Else. But, <laughs> yeah. you know, you so I've that? never been a fan of this guy. Never once watched his TV show uh, but this is the stuff that makes me actually afraid of where it, it we're going should. because what, what, it shows be, the complete lack of, of right, any we sort need, of, and there's no boundaries well, or limitations well, right clearly, there's no, the Iranian strike well, made made that clear but if, here's the thing he's gonna do whatever it takes so that he can you know the, the deplorables I think is the idea of how he looks at his base right yeah. he looks down on everyone that's around him he is like I, I truly believe the ultimate megalomaniac oh, sure. you know and he is a individual but here's what's more troubling is what you said to the, just now. What's more troubling is the base is still voting for him. Yes. He is clearly hurting them. It's almost like the, the, the racial connotations and the racial implications I see with how the Tea Party reacted when Obama was elected. Right, sure. The, the very people who needed health care are there at these at these rallies down south, at these rallies with masks on their face. I saw a, a Bill Maher episode one time, and they, like, they've got the mask on their faces. But these are the people we are, you know, I, you know, to be America, to be such the great country that we are, we are so filled with hate. Mm -hmm. We are so filled with ignorance. We are so filled with so many things that he's manipulating. Right, but, sure. but what you're pointing to is that people are not voting really for their own interest. Right. You know, they're not really protecting their self-interest. No. And they're putting this visceral anger yeah. and hatred above everything else. And that's what's getting people to the polls. That's what's getting him to support. It's visceral. It's not intellectual. It doesn't make any sense. You yeah. can't intellectually reconcile well, it but it's this based is where on we feel. need fishman to come up here and give his speech about the criminal mind yeah well <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll tell you here, here's one thing that I, I read yeah. in the story though that i thought was hugely important so when mattis finally gets fired and he wrote his resignation letter but he was fired obviously and they want to do something they call a clap out where everybody stands in a long line and they all applaud as you're walking out of the pentagon for the last out. time <laughs> They were, trying, they were trying to set one up that was going to be like a mile long for his service That's to the, the country. Best. Yeah, a he said no. He <laughs> said no, and the reason he said no 
is because he knew the president would take it out on everybody that was in that line. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's exactly. that vindictive. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, okay. So that's a guy throwing scary. on a grenade, a that's, clapping grenade. That's, that's you know, I mean, still, so. But that's something. he was just like, nope, we but, are not going to do this because I'm not going to allow you did, guys to be punished. Let me ask, did this really shock anybody, though, what you're reading? I mean, it's amazing, but it's a really... This, this, was, this was rough. I mean, I, I'm going to read the rest of this book okay. because this is... Yeah. I mean, this is, I don't this think is a man, there's any low. This is I don't, a man I don't think there's unhinged. any bottom. I don't think you. I, I don't. Can, I don't. I just don't utterly think out of his depth. depth. Right, but but there's no bottom here. I mean, I just think I, just what terrifies me is he can go as low as low can go. Right, and that's a frightening prospect. Can we add the comic relief that that I read last night in the New York Times? <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, well, Matt Whitaker, the 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 literal bullet head uh, acting AG, who I believe took over after Jeff Sessions. Yes. Before Barr came along. Um, was given the nickname behind his back by his colleagues as Mungo. It's the best. That's a great nickname, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that is so fitting. Well, and I remind Mongo you hungry. because I don't, think you, I don't <laughs> so think you fitting. knew about this at the time, but this is the guy who held the patent on the special toilet for well endowed men. <laughs> wow. I know. I was trying to figure well, out. Well, I have no need. But you know, the sales must be through the roof. <laughs> well, hey, look, it's like the marketing behind the Magnum condom. They're actually the same size as the regular ones. <laughs> Apparently, I read this, it, but it's like nobody's going to buy the one that doesn't say Magnum, are they? And as an aside, Alex Karras is I'm inducted to the Hall of Fame. Yes, yeah. that was so exactly Mongo right. comes up. Mongo. You know, the universe kind of has some little uh, Mongo, synchronicity. Mongo, Mongo need deeper toilet. Hey, by the way, did anybody notice something that happened last last week that? didn't really get much attention exactly. that the investigation into Hillary Clinton and the financial dealings of the Clinton Foundation and uranium basically one. Uh, went away because they didn't find anything <laughs> Jeff Sessions handpicked prosecutor who spent two years investigating this basically said the other day that this is just quieted down that's what wow. the feds do when they decide to wind down an investigation they don't have a big thing saying we didn't find anything no. but they didn't find anything and, and, right. and what is the likelihood that Trump goes in his rallies and repeats lock her up Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, and, and makes the same will. allegations that have been disproved. It, of course, mm-hmm. uh, absolutely, he will. But it, that's again, yeah. very maddening. But no, I, I, I miss that quite frankly. Yeah, and I'm watching MSNBC and I'm uh, CNN. Right. Well, I mean, obviously, there was a little bit else going on, you know. But uh, <laughs> it, it, world I turmoil, it was worth, domestic worth mentioning turmoil. that uh, all those people that say, "Yeah, but what about?" Well, what about it? What about it? Your own people investigated the people you handpicked to do this, who were out for blood, and they found nada, nothing wrong. There was right. nothing in there. Shall we, we move on? on? Yeah. Well, what shall we move on to here? Um, How about the uh, I've got a couple of other in things. Lansing. This, oh, uh, Peter Lucido. Yeah. Peter Lucido, <laughs> state bad. senator Pete Lucido, talking to a young reporter, uh, female reporter, uh, basically dismissed her outright, which is insulting enough. But then what he actually said to her was pretty bad. He was ha- hosting a group of students from De La Salle, because that's just what De La Salle wants right now is more press. <laughs> Fred Kavanaugh, hi. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. And just said, hey, these boys could have some fun with you. <laughs> yeah, and you could have some fun with them. Right. I, mean, I remember being a young reporter in Lansing and being dismissed outright sometimes because you're, oh, shut up, you young kid, whatever. But this took it to a completely new level. Um, and he's kind of apologized, but, but not then really. then he changed his mind. He decided yeah. he was misquoted, which is, you know, which And he is wasn't ridiculous. misquoted. No. It's, it's it pretty darn clear. And I thought it in took, a Trumpian world. But I thought I it took a lot of guts for her to come out there and say, hey, yeah. this guy just totally did this to me. And, and she's 22. I mean, this that's wow. a very that's a young child. age. You know, exactly. Just starting her career. And yeah. He pulls this and, yeah, it was pretty bad. I, you know, I was heartened, though, that that story grew legs like Boom. Well, and, and it's uh, like it's been an it's gone around the country. It's national. It'll be forgotten in 24 hours. It will be know? forgotten. But at least I mean, it it forced the um, Mike For Shirky, you yeah. know, the the president of the of the Senate GOP caucus to essentially Call Lucido in for a scolding, and I think it's going to be an investigation. Know, They're going to investigate it. Nothing we'll will happen. See. But I, the I, point no, is, no, no. let's you know, I. They're, the, they're in, worried about 2020. They're worried well, about the women's vote. And but, you know, in the recesses, like I've been using that word in the recesses of my heart. I know you're right again. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we can't just acknowledge. Let's just not let's let's have an agreement. Let's not acknowledge that it just will go away because I'm not going to I'm going to be the loud the squeaky wheel gets the oil. OK. And I, I have to just applaud her because I'm not a reporter. But I, I know, and having dealt with reporters, I'm very, even when they do stories and I don't want to have anything to do with them, I can appreciate the professionalism and how they approach me. I can appreciate, it's almost like being a salesperson, getting door slammed in your face all the time. All right. the time. So your much. job, what you guys have done throughout your career, I can respect. And, you know, and I can respect 
that being dismissed. And, you know, people dismiss you because whatever, they're, you mm-hmm. know, they're buttholes or whatever. They, they don't want to talk. Be. Or they don't want to talk. Well, you yeah. know, let's that not happens. even, let's keep it But to do this, not only that, in this culture, in this day, in dealing with what De La Salle is dealing with. Right. I mean, you know, as a kid, as, as a product of Catholic all boys high school myself, you know, I, I am worried about what happens. And I'm worried about somebody who is the senator. I mean, and, and you know, I like a lot of those things that Lucido has said, mm-hmm. but it causes me to take a pause on that now because well, of, you he, know, it, it's just, and, he, he, and he's a Republican. He was I'm seen a Democrat, as but potentially I'm, being a challenger in 2022. Yes, I know. Yes. Somebody's going to compete for the Republican nomination. Yeah, I, I, but I, you know, but if we don't get but, anything out of the investigation, which you do, and people need to continue to chirp and get that, make that be that squeaky wheel so that he's not. Tweet. You know, that's the victory. Maybe right. it's the victory that Maybe we don't. Right. He doesn't lose his seat. Yeah. But at the same time, because he is term limited. Yeah, we only got a couple shame. years. Of, yeah. There's some yeah. a moment of humiliation. But no, that know, moment of humiliation to carry on so that he's not. Mm-hmm. You know, because, hey, here you got to look at it in the long game. The long game is what Democrats need to start looking at. Here's me. I'm telling them the strategy. <laughs> what they need to be looking at is, Somebody hey, has to. You, yeah. Some, <laughs> yeah, I know. So... He doesn't get the nomination. He is a guy that could rally both Democrats and Republicans based upon his personality. Mm -hmm. You know, he is a guy who has some charisma. But if we keep him from being in there, then the next opponent won't be as strong. And so the Democrats can... You know, have well, a, have comments, a comments that could be seen as dismissive of gang rape uh, typically don't fly very well with women voters. Um, <laughs> but they voted, <laughs> they voted for Trump. They voted for Trump and grab them by, grab them yeah, by That's you typically know, frowned yeah. upon no, from what I gather. typically <laughs> frowned <laughs> upon. But, uh, you know, for me, it was kind of an important thing because Lansing is always a little bit behind the times when it comes to culture yeah. at the Capitol. Gosh, I mean, so. it's very cozy up there. You've had a lot of lobbyists that have been mm-hmm. there for a long time. Um, and I've Lobby. seen this stuff's been going on forever. And if this changes the culture up there a little bit so that even some members no. of the press corps that are up there aren't so dismissive, mm-hmm. are not so casual about these things or look the other way on some of this stuff, as they mm-hmm. probably have for decades, then that's not a bad thing. No, I, 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 I oh, think I that's true. Spend there's, some there's, time in the Capitol press corps. It is different up there. Yeah. Yeah. Move there's on. Benefit. All right. We've got that's to wrap it up because we're running out of time. And I thought this story was good because I have two lawyers in here. And I thought this was great. There's uh, a man in Kansas. He's not very happy with his ex-wife or her lawyer, because apparently he didn't do very well in the divorce settlement. Uh, He has now requested, officially requested, uh, put in a motion that an Iowa judge grant him a trial by combat so they can have a sword fight with samurai swords with his ex-wife and her attorney. So both of them. It sounds completely reasonable to me. Yes. Um, I think a duel is always a good thing. (laughs) um, But he wants katana swords. I mean, you know. Oh, he's very specific. Apparently he's well trained. So here's what he argued in in the filing. He said, to this day, trial by combat has never been explicitly banned or restricted as a right in these United States. And it was used as recently as 1818 in British courts. He was watching Game of Thrones. Wow. So I don't think you're allowed to duel anymore. Under the court rules, no. Uh, no, you're not allowed, I don't think, to duel. Uh, even if you want to be a mutual combatant, I don't think that's allowed. Um, that guy's completely, uh, you know. Well, yeah. here, here's I the got, I got the frustration. understand you're angry, but that's not the way to resolve that issue. Well, the response from, from the, the attorney. That's the therapist in you talking. Yeah, that is. The, res- the <laughs> response from the wife's attorney said, um, it should be noted that just because the U.S. and Iowa constitutions do not specifically prohibit battling another person with a deadly katana sword, it does prohibit a court sitting in equity from ordering same. And then, of course, the first thing he asked for was a psychological evaluation. (laughs) (laughs) On what basis? Yeah, Yeah, well, so anyway, but (laughs) I think he's probably representing himself in this one because could you guys find an attorney that would actually write a brief like that? Uh, Sadly enough, I probably could, but um, (laughs) I I wouldn't associate myself with him. I wouldn't even make the referral, but yeah, he's right. They're they're out there, you know, have have money, we'll travel. There you go. Perfect. Well, we got to wrap it up. We are out of time. There's a bunch of stuff we did not get to. Paladin, I want I, it's I love it's that on show. Me TV, I by know, the way. I've if anybody it. watches that channel, uh, yeah, Paladin, Have mm-hmm. Gun, Will Travel. Mm-hmm. Like I like it very much. Lucas <laughs> McCain. Well, he, uh, yeah, he, Lucas he, McCain, I love that show too. Oh, that's The Rifleman. The ri- Rifleman's, first of all, The Rifleman's incredible because he is a serial killer. Uh, He's yes. shooting three people a, a, a show. Exactly. From my count, about 150 to 200 people are dead. And I love Lucas McCain. Don't, he's always doing the right, but somebody well, should actually. Same with Marshall Dillon on Gunsmoke. I mean, if you kill as many people as these guys have, they would be the most notorious serial killers Absolutely, but in the I'm world. telling you, that show, if you watch it, has, you can live your life by the moral code. Oh, well, the you know, who the, you know who the director was of most of those Sam Peckinpah, didn't he? Yeah, yeah Sam I, I read, because I, honestly, I thought this is a great show. Yeah. 
and I've watched every episode multiple times. Well, apparently the go. kid who was on The Rifleman was sort of like the Tiger Beat kid of his day. He was like Crawford. the teen heartthrob. Yeah. I think he can started you, out in the in Can the you Mouse find Kateers. that on Hulu? Or? He's still around. Yeah, he does uh, conventions because ha- I've looked it up because I love the show. <laughs> oh, my go. goodness. Paul. I love it. I, that was, I wish I had that childhood. <laughs> every single episode, there will be, uh, you know what? You could have a drinking game around The Rifleman. How many times that kid says, Paul. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's his only line that yeah. he has in the show yeah. every single time. I like the word. I like Micah. Every time somebody says Micah, because I love that character. I think go. that was Tom Mix, maybe, but Micah. I <laughs> love go. it. All, all right. right. We, we are apologize. far astray apologize. from where we started, but that's all right. Me TV also has Star Trek on there, so I like that stuff. Uh, Todd Perkins, thanks for being here. Appreciate well, it. Well, I love much. it. I always, we never get to every, we get so caught up in, in a good way. Yeah, that's I, what I just it's have about. A great time, you well, know, yeah. every time. I, we're glad to have you, yeah. Joel Sklar. Welcome always back. A it's always a pleasure. Yeah. Oh, it's Nancy wonderful. Derringer. Can I tell Julie that this week's scarf has skulls, hearts, and swords on it, and it is definitely a Friday movie. She is not going through a divorce, though. <laughs> no, not going through a divorce. No. Still and I'm married. Craig. Thanks, thanks to Michael Lucido for, of course, engineering this broadcast. Also, thanks to Tech Town and Samaritas for sponsoring this program. We hope you continue to do it, even after watching it. And um, I just got <laughs> appreciate it very much. I just got a text from Alan Langle, and he reports, drive home safely. Drive home <laughs> safely. There you go. Have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, the Craig Folly Show on Deadline Detroit is made possible by Samaritas, which is the state's largest private foster care and adoption agency. But they do a heck of a lot more than that. They've been serving homeless families, persons with disabilities, abused and trafficked women. They're also one of the largest resettlement agencies in the state. They provide market rate and affordable housing for seniors and HUD housing for families. And they also have skilled nursing, memory care and rehab communities in Grand Rapids, Cadillac and Saginaw. Samaritas, Thanks for their support. Great organization doing great stuff all around the state.